Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to my gallery. These two lovely large jars, referred to as water jars or, or ollas uh, in New Mexico, are part of my summer show called Black, which focus on his, focuses on historic Pueblo pottery from Tiwa-speaking Pueblos uh, north of Santa Fe. Uh, those Pueblos include Santa Clara Pueblo, San Aldefonso, uh, Pueblo San Juan. These two lovely pieces from Santa Clara Pueblo. And I'm so excited to have them. Both of them are by a, a masterful, masterful 20th century, early 20th century potter named Nestora Silva. So you can see similarities in form. I have both big, both with lovely wide mid-body, um, a somewhat elongated neck, which flares out just a little in a very, very elegant manner. This one has bare paws, which may or may not uh, show up in the, in the vid video, but they will uh, in the photographs that you can click on when, when you uh, uh, examine this pot online. So beautiful, beautiful examples, but you can see a difference between the two. This one, high polish, very obviously, high polish, beautiful finish. This one was also polished, however, this jar probably a little bit earlier and made for home use, home Pueblo use, what we call utilitarian use. It shows what we also refer to as ethnographic wear, use in the home. So how would that cause the surface to differ from one pot to the other? When the, when the pots were made for utilitarian use, the firing process is the same, both traditional outdoor pit firing with horse manure, pinon wood, other natural elements being used in the firing process. For a jar that's going to be used in the home, there's not much concern about making sure that none of the fuel ever touches the pot. That's something that would happen later in the art market as art dealers, collectors begin to tell potters, oh, you know, we like the surface to be smooth. In this particular case, this wonderful jar, very, very strong looking jar with uh, uh, a swirled or twisted neck, which gives you a muscular look and feel, is thick and heavy, and the fuel adhered to the surface in the firing process. From the standpoint of an historic view of the pot, it's a very, very wonderful thing. It, it gives us an idea of the period of time when this particular jar may have been made. There's, there's white water, our, our um, liquid stains on the inside. In fact, Tony Roller of Santa Clara Pueblo, Margaret DeFoy, the famous potter's daughter, told me that in her home, jars like this were used to serve milk to the children. So beautiful, beautiful form, lovely, warm ethnographic use. 1920s, by the 1930s, we're starting to see the influence of the art market. So protecting the jar from the flying fuel. But you may be able to pick up, you certainly can on the photos on my website, that this jar isn't completely black. It would have taken more manure to cover up this jar, fully reduce the color to black from dense smoke, um, an oxygen reducing atmosphere. But again, at this period of time, potters weren't that concerned about that. All black, all over, was a prejudice of the future art market. The benefit for us, this beautiful, beautiful, highly polished, gorgeous jar has these wonderful golden highlights coming through it. Two wonderful examples by Nestora Silva. I'm not sure there have been two beautiful large examples of Nestora Silva's work together in one place in many generations. And we're so fortunate to still be able to enjoy the work of this master potter from Santa Clara Pueblo.